welcome to our Letter M episode on Mrs. Skolsky's Schoolhouse. Letter M says, mmm. As always, I'm going to give you three clues to see if you can guess which animal our Letter M guest might be. Are you ready? They like to store extra seeds and nuts at their homes in case they can't find any. Clue number two, they have brown, gray, or reddish brown fur that's very soft and helps them blend into their surroundings. Three, these small rodents live in fields, meadows, and grassy areas. That last clue should have helped you. If you guessed mouse, you're right. Please welcome Marty Mouse. Hello, Marty. Hey, Ms. Skulky. How you doing? I'm great. Thanks for asking. How are you, Marty? Not too shabby, not too shabby. Did you have any trouble getting in here today? You're, you're pretty small, and I was a little bit worried that you might get stepped on or trapped outside. Nah, not to worry, Miss Skulski. As a matter of fact, I did get stuck outside, but I used my natural flexibility to squeeze through a small opening in the window. In the window? Ah, uh, for sure. Uh, how did you crawl up that high? Well, it's a little known fact that mice are excellent climbers. We can easily climb plants, trees, even walls. Okay, but that window in the back is its hardly open at all. <laughs> well, sure. But mice have very flexible bodies, Ms. Skulski, due to our somewhat collapsible rib cages. Hold on, collapsible rib cage? Friends, collapsible means that something can fold in on itself to get smaller. Marty, your rib cage can collapse? Well, our ribs can bend more easily than the ribs of other animals, so we can flatten ourselves to squeeze through small spaces. Basically, if our head can fit through a space, then the rest of our body can fit through that space. Wow, I had no idea. Well, Glad you found your way in, but I'm sorry you had to come in that way. Forget about it. <laughs> okay, well then, let's begin by asking where your home is. I think I can handle that question. I live on the prairies of Alberta, Canada, near a town called Castez. I see. Hmm. And how old are you, Marty? Uh, let's see. Me and the missus just had our third litter of pups, so I must be, oh gosh, eight months old already. Yeesh, where does the time go? <laughs> eight months? Yeah, that's right. Okay, wait. Uh, you said a few things there. First of all, you said you're a father? Sure am, and a good one. Okay, well, that's good to hear. And you called the baby mice pups? Correctamundo. But they're mice, not dogs. Well, Ms. Skulski, perhaps you don't know this, but pups is used by many in the scientific community to describe the babies of lots of different animal species. Oh, really? Dogs, pigs, fox, bats, seals, rats, mice. <laughs> I see. And how many pups are in a litter of mice? Let's see, our first litter was three pink bundles of joy, second one we had six, and the third one was about five? And the last one was, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six. six. Uh, so the way I figure, three, six, five, and six together makes 20. <laughs> You've had 20 pups? I'm, and I'm proud to say that we're expecting again. Any day now, as a matter of fact. Oh, wow, that's a lot of mice. Indeed, Ms. Skulski. To tell you the truth, at one point in time, we had 11 pups in the hole with us. Failure to launch, you know, too cozy, I guess. But needless to say, we were happy when the second batch moved out. It was getting pretty crowded. I bet. And I should mention that uh, despite my youthful appearance, I'm also a proud grandfather and great-grandfather. <laughs> oh, wow. That's right, Ms. Skulski. Strong lineage in my genes. I'll say. I have read that mouse families are generally... Large. Well, it's better for everyone that way. You can't get lonely when you're surrounded by family, right? True. Uh, what can I say? They keep us busy, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm sure they do. <laughs> now, Marty, I, don't, I didn't know that uh, mice have mates. Well, not all mice. It all depends on what kind of we're talking about here. Oh. How many different kinds of mice are there? As far as we know, there are more than a thousand species of mice around the world. Some more common than others. A thousand? One thousand? Wow! What kind are you, Marty? I'm a field mouse, also referred to sometimes as a meadow vole. Oh, okay. Hmm. So I'm assuming you like to live in fields and meadows. Is that correct? Uh, for sure, but other places too. Farms, logs, tree stumps. My family lives in tall grasses. That's where we prefer to nest. Nest. You make nests? Of course. The pups need a safe place to grow. And how do you make those nests, Marty? Uh, we find things we can shred and carry back home easily. Well, what kind of things? Grass, leaves, straw. 
sometimes we get lucky and come across some paper or fabric, although the best is fiberglass insulation. Oh, that keeps us snug, let me tell ya. <laughs> you find insulation in fields? Sometimes. You'd be surprised what people throw into empty fields, Miss Skolsky. And then we work and form everything together into a little ball, and uh, yeah, we live in it. Or we burrow. You burrow? Yeah, especially in the winter. As I'm sure you can understand, if it's too cold, we need to go underground to survive. Mm. But we need to do it before winter comes, because naturally we can't dig into frozen ground. Well, that makes sense. And how do you get underground? Ms. Skalski, field mice are excellent diggers. Wow, field mice are really tough. Oh yes, Ms. Skalski, we have a remarkable ability to adapt to different environments, which is why we're all over the world. I see. Hmm. Marty, perhaps you can explain to everyone watching what it means to burrow. Oh, sure. Burrowing means digging holes and tunnels underground to live in, and of course the tunnels help us get around, find food, that sort of thing. Mm, of course, yes. And what do field mice eat, Marty? Mm, we prefer plants, seeds, grasses, and grain. Matter of fact, we have a special set of teeth that continuously grow throughout our lives to help us chew through tough plant material. Wow, impressive. Oh yes, we're resourceful. However, as you can imagine, sometimes we have to make do with the food we find in the fields. What does that mean? Well, it's at those times that we have to stray away from our preferred diet and make do with other things. Other things? Such as? Crickets, beetles, worms. Not our favorite, I can assure you. But field mice have a high metabolism and need to eat frequently to keep our energy up. It sounds like life can be quite tough for field mice, Marty. Yes, Ms. Skalski, it is. As they say, no matter how well one prepares, plans often go awry. Hmm. I think I've read that somewhere before. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Hmm. So, Marty, I understand that you need to nest, but why do you need tunnels? Well, you see, Ms. Skalski, during the night, field mice travel along those tunnels looking for food. At night? Field mice are nocturnal? Oh, yes, indeed we are. As a matter of fact, we have a unique adaptation called tunnel vision. Tunnel vision. Yeah, it literally helps us see well in places where there isn't much light, like tunnels. <laughs> Tunnel vision. Oh, makes sense, doesn't it? It sure does. And let me tell you, it has helped me many a time to find roots of young trees to eat in those tunnels. Oh, wow. I, I would think that tree roots are pretty difficult for a little mouse to eat. One would think. But in fact, Ms. Skalski, field mice have a special digestive system that helps us take nutrients from very tough plant material. Oh, wow. <laughs> Friends, nutrients are the vitamins and important parts of the food that help us stay healthy and grow. Indeed a Rooney. And since we're talking about how amazing field mice are, I feel like I should take this opportunity to mention that we also have a keen sense of touch thanks to the many nerve endings in our whiskers. Wow, I didn't know that, Marty. Absolutely. Our whiskers also help us move through our neighborhoods. Wow. Okay, so we've learned that field mice can see really well in the dark and they can feel well because of their sense of touch on their whiskers. That's right. Well, what about the other senses? Do field mice hear well, too? Oh, yes. Field mice have a strong sense of hearing. In fact, we can hear very high-pitched sounds that humans cannot hear. Wow. You know, for such little creatures, you're really quite impressive, I must say. And we have a strong sense of smell, which helps us locate food, identify predators, and communicate with other mice. Oh. And how do you communicate with other mice? Through squeaks? Not just squeaks, Ms. Skalski, but also chirps and ultrasonic sounds. What is an ultrasonic sound? Sounds that are too high to be heard by humans. We, we use them to alert one another about predators. Oh, that makes sense. Predators are other animals that might want to eat Marty. Oh. <laughs> Marty, what, what are some of the predators that you need to avoid? Boxes, snakes, owls, ravens, yeesh, I shudder just thinking about it. It reminds me of the time I narrowly escaped to becoming dinner for a large hawk. Oh dear, I'm sure that was very frightening. Fortunately, field mice are known for their agility and can jump 18 inches high. And believe me, I did that day. 18 inches? That's a foot and a half. Indeed, Ms. Skalski. He swooped down to get me. 
but my dear friend Sam alerted me just in time for me to jump in the air and narrowly escape. Wow. Did the hawk try to come back again? Of course. But Sam and I were booking it, let me tell you, as fast as our little feet could take us. <laughs> Where did you go? Underground, of course, thankfully. There was a tunnel opening close by, and we wasted no time getting in. Then what happened? Well, it was springtime, and the melting snow was creating lots of flooding in some of the tunnels. <gasps> Fortunately, we field mice are excellent swimmers and can navigate through water using our strong hind legs and paddle-like feet. Eventually, Sam and I found our way to safety. What a relief. <laughs> Indeed. I'm proud to say that field mice have a very strong homing instinct, as I already mentioned, a superb sense of smell as well. So we can find our way back to our burrows, even if we venture far away. And were you far away? Yes, we were. But we survived, and here we are. What can I say? Wow. When did this happen? Oh, gosh. Let me see. I was just a young mouse. Yeah, I think it would have to be at least five months ago. You've had a pretty full life so far, haven't you, Marty? Yes, I have, Miss Skulski. And so far, claws crossed, I've been lucky. Mm. Well, Marty, before we wrap up our chat, I, I do want to ask you one more thing. Sure thing, Miss Skulski. I can't help but notice you have a kind of an accent. And I know you said that you live in Alberta, in Canada, but the sound of your accent doesn't seem like you're actually from that area. <laughs> Well, you see, Ms. Skulski, that's because I was born and raised just outside of Boston. Boston, Massachusetts? That's right. In the United States? <laughs> yes. How did you get into Canada? As you know by now, I am prone to adventures, some planned and some not. Yes. And as I've already mentioned, field mice have a healthy appetite and particularly enjoy seeds and grasses and grains. Okay. Well, it turns out that your good friend Marty here has a weakness for canola seed. Okay. As you may or may not know, Alberta ships some of their canola seed crops to the States, Massachusetts being one of them. Hmm, yes. Well, what can I say? A belly full of seed and a very long train ride later, I woke up in Canada. Wow. Needless to say, I never saw my family again. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, don't feel bad, Miss Skulski. Look how things worked out for old Marty. I got a wife, lots of little ones, and now I'm a guest on a YouTube channel. Go figure. <laughs> well, that's a really good way to look at it, Marty. My goodness, this has been a very interesting conversation, hasn't it? Thank you so much for coming and being a guest here on Mrs. Skulski's Schoolhouse. Oh, my pleasure. I had a wicked good time. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed yourself, Marty. And I promise we'll let you leave out the door rather than the window. Oh, thanks, Miss Skulski. I better be going. Oh, okay. You take care now. Uh, you, I, uh, you two kids. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Goodbye, Marty. Goodbye, everyone. See you next time. Hey, kids. Marty the Mouse here. If you enjoyed this channel and this show, be sure to hit like and subscribe for more. Thank you.